back in 2014, in May, I won a pair of tickets to go and see uh, the movie adaptation of The Fault in Our Stars at Cinema in Glasgow. And I remember going along and we were given promotional t-shirts and we had to stand in the queue and we had to hand over our phones because it was at this point I think about two months before the UK general release and a couple of weeks before the uh, US release. Um, and I just remember being there and it all being people who were so excited to see this movie. We're huge fans of the book, we're huge fans of the, uh, um, huge fans of John Green and it just being like this palpable excitement and going into the cinema and people not being ashamed to kind of laugh and cry. <laughs> there was people really sobbing and yell things out and it was just so exciting at the time. And I was reminded of this last night when I went to see uh, Everything Everything, which is an adaptation of the book by Nicola Yoon, which I admittedly haven't read. And just as the title card came up, this wee girl behind us, she was maybe about 14, 15 years old, she just squealed. And she was obviously a fan of the book and she was so excited. And I was just thinking about how nice that is that um, these movies become these spaces where uh, where like young girls can go and, and not be judged for the things that they like. I remember having a similar feeling when I went to see the first Twilight film, uh, <laughs> back when it was acceptable to still like Twilight and the first Hunger Games movie, we sent friends to get tickets at the cinema and there's so many of us going that the ticket strip they picked up was about two meters long. But then after seeing the movie, I just thought it did this massive disservice uh, to young adult audience and a lot of that is probably to do with the actual plot itself and the book which has had mixed reviews um, from people saying especially the ending isn't great. So basically Everything Everything is about a young girl, Maddie, who's played by the lovely Amanda Stenberg who I'm a huge fan of um, and she has a severe uh, immunodeficiency skid uh, which means that she can't leave her house, she's left in this uh, sort of hermetically sealed IKEA dream house. Um, and she's 18 and she's never been outside. And then on her 18th birthday, a uh, cute boy moves in next door, his name's Ollie. Um, and he's, he likes to wear black and he's a bad boy, except for you never get to see any of his kind of bad boy moments. Uh, <laughs> he claims he's a petty thief, but he never, never does anything that's that rebellious in the movie that we see. Um, sorry, my arms are so sore. Um, and then, so yeah, so the, the movie has quite a few redeeming qualities. Um, I really like the bits, it, it doesn't ever patronise the idea of developing a relationship with someone online. Because um, they can't talk face to face for a large section in the start of the movie and it's all based in her sort of um, imagination that they're together in her architectural creations. And there's a sort of astronaut figurine which has a whole lot of metaphorical resonance. Uh, but um, basically, it has this very sort of eternal sunshine of the spotless mind sort of feeling. That's really good. Um, Anna Kanani Rose, I think is how you pronounce her name. Uh, I know her as Tiana from The Princess and the Frog. She does an amazing job playing the mum and playing the complexities of this mother who is obviously deeply troubled, um, but also really loves her daughter and how that kind of gets horribly out of hand towards the end of the movie. So most of the problems with this film aren't actually to do with the film itself. It looks nice, it looks very basic, very stripped down, everything's very clean. Uh, but one of the film problems is the amount of obvious product placement. I don't tend to mind a little bit of product placement in a TV show, but in movies, I think, gosh, you've got, you've already probably had a lot of money funneled into this. Like, I just, uh, and I don't like it when it's obviously a film for children, <laughs> which this is, this is a film for teenage girls. Um, so the first one, it comes when in this totally gratuitous and started like product placement scene where she gets herself a credit card which is really relevant later in the movie um, <laughs> and that is also never resolved as well what happens with the whole credit card thing might be in the book but not in the movie and she orders herself a blue jumper and it arrives in this very like almost cartoonish mod cloth box and then if you're familiar with mod cloth <laughs> you can tell through the rest of the movie that that's where all the clothes that she wears at least have come from and I'm not happy with that at all uh, there's also a bit where he plays speakers, he connects by Bluetooth uh, to her Bose speakers and that's obviously like a whoa, see how 
far you can connect to our Bluetooth speakers from sort of product placement and that's, that doesn't jive with me. I also do see why people have such a problem with the ending. Basically they're kind of, it come, becomes obvious uh, quite about halfway through that this is three ways it's got to go. Um, because you get to the point where she has left home, she's in Hawaii and obviously she's got to get sick, she's got to get sick and get hospitalised. But not before they've had sex, which means that, which kind of threw up a red flag in my head that this film basically film follows the exact same structure as The Fault in Our Stars and a number of other young adult books, which isn't very imaginative. Um, but it becomes clear that either one, she has to die. Uh, two, she has to, um, she uh, basically turns out not to, to, to have been cured or she was never sick in the first place. And it actually follows that third, uh, third chain of events, which is really, uh, <laughs> really a bit of an issue. Um, so she was never sick in the first place, which adds further complications to the mother's story, which is actually a really interesting and compelling arc, but it's also tonally weird, because you think this movie could quickly turn into a sort of psychological thriller, like she's been holding her daughter hostage for all these years, uh, but it doesn't do that. And we don't ever get a real resolution between uh, Maddie and her mother. Uh, we do a little bit, but it's just not satisfying and it's totally put by the wayside in favour of the romantic arc at the end. And the reason I have a, such a problem with this ending is because it really... You think you're going into a film about a sick kid. And I can imagine a lot of sick kids think they're going into a movie about a sick kid um, when they're not. And it's not quite as bad as the sort of miracle cure arc that we often get. Um, but it's still not great. Now what I think would have been a good resolution to this is that she is actually sick, but um, maybe a little bit more resilient uh, than her mother thinks. And then they get to deal with her mother's sort of attachment issues. Um, but she gets to have a bit more freedom and maybe gets to go on to study architecture because she manages a good couple of days by the looks of things in Hawaii uh, without any trouble. Um, and she also gets on an airplane. And if you're not getting sick on an airplane, you're not getting sick. <laughs> because those places are just kind of full of recycled air and you can get really sick on an airplane. So that was just, that was a little bit of a hole in the story. Um, uh, and I thought it would be, just be good if she actually, if it was a story about more like coming to terms with living with a chronic illness or something like that, but it wasn't. So it was a little bit disappointing. Um, not a really bad film, cute. Uh, nice little love story. The boy in it seemed nice. Uh, which is a shame for teenage girls all over the world <laughs> because he's really he's really just kind of scraping by on being a nice guy type thing. Um, so I give this movie a 4 out of 10. So I wasn't that impre impressed by it, but you might. If you'd like to hear more from me, more book reviews, more movie reviews, you can go to my blog, girlaboutcampus.co.uk, uh, link downstairs. But, yep, that's basically it. I'll see you guys later.